I am Richard Cortez. I am 81 years old. By God's wonderful and amazing grace, and the amazing thing is he, he's not only given me 81 years of life, but it has sustained me in good health, physical, mental, and hopefully growing in spirit and in truth and in knowledge and in love in Christ. And I have to say at this point, uh, with all sincerity and reverence, that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. I have to say and admit that I am a sinner saved by grace. I lived a long time, many years in the church. In fact, I remember from the very beginning as a young child sleeping on the floor in front of my parents in a large Assembly of God church where they were stomping and yelling and and uh, praising and my aunt Lolita pounding on the piano and foreign languages being spoken and I would put myself to sleep on Sunday nights and it seemed like an endless thing people would not go home it was just continuous and this is the way I would put myself to sleep and this is where my parents were married and this is my roots and uh, but after a while we moved around I was born in 1927 during the depression years and uh, possibly because of the finances uh, uh, we moved around quite a bit th throughout the city but my dad was always insistent that we go to church no matter where we moved we attended several churches uh, sometimes they were close to the home and sometimes not but my dad was very conscientious that it was important to attend church so I grew up uh, being uh, an attendant of church and as we grew up uh, it was part of my life going to church and I considered it very important it was a habit and a tradition that my dad started out, started out with and I appreciated that very much later on after I got out of the Navy I went to college got an education and uh, it was during these years that we uh, belonged to Methodist Church and uh, I, I grew up in this Methodist church and uh, attended all the activities, sang in the choir and uh, even led the youth choir. And uh, I felt good about myself. I was uh, serving the Lord, I said to myself. I was uh, conscientious of what my father had taught me. And I was involved in all the activities, canvassing from house to house, uh, going on missionary, uh, missionary trips and going to summer camps. And uh, it was fun and the fellowship was good, and I knew I was doing something worthwhile, it, uh, and church was something that was valuable to me. A couple of years, a young evangelist came into town and had a revival. And uh, my wife and I uh, walked down the aisle. We responded to the call, we signed the sheet, and um, we were both baptized. There was, this was um, back in the early 60s. And uh, as I look back, there wasn't much change in my life. Uh, the only difference that I noticed was that I had gone in dry and came out wet. But that was the only difference in my life. And I, so I kept going on to church, and uh, it, it was uh, my custom, and it was my habit. And uh, I uh, did not consider sin or salvation or repentance. Uh, I was too busy in my schoolwork and church work and leading the band. And uh, I considered, well, I didn't even think about sin or salvation or repentance or anything like that. I felt that I was too busy for these things and uh, I went ahead and uh, did my thing in church. Six years later, I found myself on an airplane to Hawaii. And, and to me, it was paradise. The air, the breezes, the palm trees, the ocean, it was truly a, a life of joy, and I was thoroughly happy there. In fact, I had decided that I would stay there forever. But this idolatrous attitude was not part of God's will. Because after a short while, well, after several years, uh, my marriage started taking a tumble. We started having problems and struggles and, and arguments for any little thing. 
and I was getting desperate and I was miserable and here I was on the island of paradise but yet I was miserable I could not understand why so one thing led to another in the early 1970 about 1972 we wound up back in San Antonio very regrettable to my plans my wife was sick I was without a job and I had an anxiety attack and I thought I was gonna die and I was just miserable. I didn't have a job in California or Hawaii or anywhere. But I have to admit that even when I was young, before I got married, in fact, I didn't get married till the age of 32. And I have to admit that during those years, I lived to satisfy the flesh. I have to admit it now that uh, I uh, had a good job, had a good education, and I felt that I had accomplished much and I, I thought much about myself and no one was complaining. I wasn't thinking about sin or, or repentance or anything like that. Um, where I went to church, I wasn't any different from, from any of my friends or relatives. So I felt comfortable. But when I look back now, I realize that I was self-righteous. I was self-centered and self-sufficient, not depending on God and just seeking to satisfy my flesh. My children had already grown. They were young adults, and by God's amazing grace, they had been saved, all three, Rick, Maida, and Ruby. And they used to come and preach to me and tell me, Dad, you're, uh, you're not learning the truth. You need to learn the truth. And in fact, Rick, uh, he came down on me and my wife real hard. He had a lot of zeal and he pounded it. Mom, Dad, you're living in sin. You're, <clears throat> you need to repent uh, or you're going to go to hell. And I thought to myself, who does this kid think he is? Tell me what to do. I've been in church all my life. I'm a deacon in this church. Uh, I'm part of the Southern Baptist Convention, a large uh, organization worldwide and well-known and... Uh, how could so many people be wrong? I said my, to myself. In fact, it occurred to me that Rick joined a cult that was meeting out in the country, in Elmendorf somewhere, and uh, that's what occurred to me, you know. And in fact, I started inquiring about this, and um, but I didn't know at the time that he knew the truth, and I was proud, and I wasn't about to admit that I was wrong, I would argue that how could so many people be wrong? And uh, God had given us a brain. He's given us a mind to use uh, as, he, as we please. And my biggest error when I look back is I had been to church for so many years and my concentration was on the church. And of course, now I know that the church does not save you. And uh, I had been living in... Um, with secret sins. And, and then I think, uh, how, how could I be so naive, so ignorant to think that a, a sovereign, a supreme sovereign God who knows all, who is uh, uh, omnipotent, omnipresent, that I could hide any secrets from Him? And I wonder how many people live like this, you know, uh, secret sins that no one sees and knows about and you feel that you're okay because no one sees you. But this is dangerous because we, we're not accountable to anyone. We're depending on our own selves, on our own will, and our, our own desires. And this was a large error on my part. And I have to admit that I was living in secret, so, uh, quote unquote, secret sin. Sins that no one could see, sins that were uh, invisible and I thought that uh, probably the, the, the greatest sin that I had committed was in Shanghai China when I was in the Navy years back but I came to realize that there's no great sin or small sin a sin is a sin whether you steal a hundred dollars or a paper clip it's a sin and it's an abomination to the Lord and I had to realize this and here I'd been to church for years and years, for many years, not 60, not 70, not 75, 80 years. 
gradually and slowly I began to grow in knowledge and in truth and the Lord started working in my life and it was during these years <clears throat> that I was exposed to much preaching on the truth and reading and studying uh, Romans and I came to the point where uh, the Apostle Paul says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and I said to myself well that's me and I had never thought of it this way and uh, he also says uh, there's none righteous no not one no one seeks after God there's not one that's righteous and I thought to myself I was convicted and the Lord was revealing himself to me and I felt that the Lord was has saved me from condemnation from the evil world from my bad thoughts and cleansed me completely inward and outward I felt clean and I had a relationship with Christ which I had never had before for so many years I had heard of Christ I read of Christ I sang Jesus loved me this I know and all these things you know uh, as far as Christ but I did not identify uh, with him as my Savior uh, who had died an agonizing death on a cross and then felt the crushing blow of the wrath of God on him for my sake he took my place he was a substitute for my sins and I did not have this relationship till now so I felt free and I felt clean I had been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and I felt a new life a new attitude a new heart and I was so thankful because for so many years I did not really know Christ I knew of him but I did not have this close relationship with him so as I think back for so many years going to church and I felt good about myself I felt proud and uh, yet I was living in sin but I thank God that he has forgiven me and um, it is by God's grace that I have been cleansed and I have the assurance that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit and, our, and the sins do not have dominion over me anymore and this is a great assurance I am so thankful I praise the Lord and I just um, pray for those that are going to church those that are reaching their their older years and are continuing to go to church because they feel obligated because of friends because of uh, but there's never been a change the only change is maybe the carpeting or the asphalt on the parking lot but there's no change in the heart no change in their lives and uh, they don't want to move because they're comfortable in their in, in their comfort zone and uh, I was there for a long time and my suggestion is to encourage think and pray is the Lord God the creator of heaven and earth that sent his son to die for our sins is he being preached or are you hearing nothing but uh, health wealth and prosperity that you're good you're number one and you deserve this and you deserve that uh, this is not Christ and my encouragement is that those that are in this position believing that church is enough is not enough the church does not save the pastor does not save the priest does not save it is only the intimate personal relationship that the Lord has and I want to praise the Lord and thank him I know that I am near the end of my race and I am prepared I have peace in my heart and if the Lord were to take me I can say like the Apostle Paul for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain I would rejoice and I would go happily I've lived a, a life for Christ and my children are serving him and I have joy in my heart and to be face to face with Christ in glory where I could live for eternity 
What a joy. What an expectation. I would go rejoicing victoriously to meet my Savior in eternal life. Ha, 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 ha.